Angley's Hulk is good. Ever since The Incredible Hulk came out, I can remember everyone saying that it was far superior to Ang Lee's Hulk that came out in 2003. And as a kid, I could remember disagreeing with them. But as an adult, I wasn't sure it would actually hold up anymore. So I decided to rewatch it, and it was actually better than I remembered it being. But for some reason, everyone seems to hate this one. I've looked into it, and I don't understand the reasoning. I understand that the Hulk is supposed to just be a character that beats people up and smashes things, but he does a good amount of that in this movie. He rips a giant mutant dog in half, and he uses his shoulder to bust its jaw when it bites him. He flexes and the dog's jaw breaks. Later he fights tanks and he uses one of the barrels as a hammer. How is that not ridiculously over the top and fun? But this movie has a whole lot of depth to it. And it's not by accident. It's directed by Ang Lee, the guy who did The Life of Pi. That whole movie was symbolic. And Ang Lee took the character of the Hulk as an opportunity for a symbolic story of emotional trauma and turmoil. And granted, that took away some of the focus on the high-powered action sequences, but it added so much more emotional depth to the character and the movie. Think about it. What is the Hulk normally known for? He gets angry and he smashes things. Hulk smash! It's not an intelligent character whatsoever. But if you look at him in this movie, every time he transforms, Forms, it has a direct connection to the hidden memories that he suppressed. He has these suppressed memories of his father killing his mother right in front of his eyes at a very young age. And each time he transforms, he is physically working through an emotional state in his mind. In this movie, he doesn't just have radiation turn him into the Hulk, it's because of nanomeds. Nanomeds are injected into him, and they heal whatever hurts most. And when you have emotional pain, the brain registers it the same way as physical pain. So when he has emotional pain, his entire body hurts, and the nanomeds go to fix that problem. Now the nanomeds don't just heal it, they make it even stronger than it was. So the more pain he endures, the stronger he gets. So it was due to the sheer amount of emotional pain that he was under that transformed him into such a hulk. So this movie isn't just about some guy becoming the not so jolly green giant whenever he gets angry. It's about the dangers of suppressed emotional trauma and the effect that it can have on the people around us. So there's all these people complaining, oh the movie's too slow, oh they're talking too much. Yeah about why he's the Hulk and the meaning behind it. If you just want to see a guy smash things, okay, fine, don't watch this movie. But you can't pretend that this movie isn't good. This movie goes above and beyond any other interpretation of the Hulk ever. And so we get to actually see at the end of the movie him confronting his father. And people were really let down by this ending for some reason. I think everyone was expecting his father to turn into the abomination or something, but that wouldn't fit the narrative at all. The whole point of the character arc was that his father was trying to use Bruce for personal gain. So the harder Bruce fought back against his father, the more power his father got. It wasn't until Bruce finally gave in and let his father win that his father actually lost because he couldn't deal with it. And that's another great metaphor in this movie. I think all the backlash is due to the fact that it's so unlike what people were expecting. But that doesn't mean it's a bad movie. And I honestly think Roger Ebert put it best. This is a comic book movie for people who wouldn't be caught dead at a comic book movie. Yeah, that's right. Roger Ebert is on my side. He liked it. Get over it. <laughs> The fact is, the only successful comic book movies anymore are the safe ones. The ones that do everything you expect them to do before they do it. And before you say it, Deadpool wasn't a risky movie. They just tricked you into thinking that so you go see it. So I do understand, they did have to sacrifice some of what everyone considers what makes the Hulk great, but in turn they added so much more depth to the character. I can't stand the Incredible Hulk, and I don't care about the Hulk in Marvel's Avengers either. But this Hulk is interesting, and the effects honestly surprisingly hold up pretty well, especially for 2003. That's 14 years ago, and he honestly doesn't look that much worse than he does in the Thor Ragnarok trailer. Ugh. And it's true, this does have some cheesy moments, but it was the early 2000s. And I'm gonna take Roger Ebert's side on this one too when I say that the comic book styling of the editing of this movie was actually really cool. The way that it switched back and forth between two different angles of the same thing and back again, I just... I don't know, it looked really cool, okay? <laughs> I can't explain why it worked in this movie and not in others, it just, it did. Ang Lee's awesome. Not to mention Danny Elfman's score is beautiful. Danny Elfman's a genius. And the scene near the end of the movie where Bruce's father acts ridiculously trying to turn Bruce back into the Hulk is one of my favorite scenes ever. Yeah. Not taking it back. I get it. 
He's ridiculous. But that's the point. He's trying to be ridiculous. He's being irritating. He's goading a reaction out of Bruce. He's doing everything in his power to irritate him. And Nick Nolte is just honestly awesome at that throughout this entire movie. So I get why you wouldn't like this movie if you just want to see a bunch of things get smashed, but there's so much more to this than the average Hulk movie. In fact, I'd say it's the best Hulk movie to date, and with how poorly it was received, probably the best one we'll ever get. But that's just my opinion. My unpopular opinion. I'm Simon from Simon's Rants, and that was my rant for today.